Hey, this is the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, the founder and president of Global Force Wrestling, and you're listening to The Pencil Podcast. Hello, ladies. You are fire. Mark us to I have a lot of things I want to get off my chest. This is The Pencil, a professional wrestling podcast starring Rennie D and friends. Thanks for listening to The Pencil. Subscribe to the show on iTunes and follow us on Twitter at Pencil Podcast. What's going on, guys? Welcome inside the tank here in College Grove, Minnesota. And welcome to the brand new PencilPodcast.com. This is the Pencil Professional Wrestling Podcast every Tuesday. I'm your host, professional wrestler, Rennie D, joined by the ever-so-pleasant Travis Dirty Messer here tonight following directly following Monday Night Raw. Dirt's coming off a piss-poor basketball game. I didn't want to bring it up. and The, the fact of the matter is I did want to bring it up because he's got a piss-poor attitude. He's had a piss-poor attitude the last couple nights when it comes to pro wrestling. Dirt, you got things you want to get off your chest tonight? I do. I, I did play one of the worst basketball games I've ever experienced myself playing as a team and individually here in the last couple hours of real time. So I'm not going to bring it to the podcast. I'm going to bring a positive Positive reaction towards Raw and Fastlane, as as positive as I possibly can, and not bring my personal issues on air. So, I'm going to try my hardest. I mean, your personal issues are at ulife.com. People can look you up and realize how bad of a basketball player you actually are. Really terrible. Really, really Don't terrible. Don't nobody check it out. I'm telling you, if, if this podcast was as bad as your basketball career, we would have stopped at episode 10. Correct. But needless to say, we wanted to talk about something outside of wrestling before we go. I'm going to stop it right there with my basketball career. Because last year or last week, you got to talk about yourself getting a facial. Facial, correct. And that's cool. This week. From a chick, though. The, the, of course. This week, I got to go see the king on Saturday. Sunday, excuse me. I went and saw the king, Elvis Presley himself. And by himself, I mean an impersonator play Elvis Presley songs. I sat in a theater in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin, with my family, about 15 of us, and about 150 90-year-old women, and watched... 90? Nine, like 90? 90-year-old women, 9-0. Nine, so like, Everyone like, there needed to be home by 5 o'clock, for sure. All May Youngs. Yep, all May Youngs, and it was it was really entertaining. I probably will never go again, but my aunts and uncles enjoyed it. It was for a birthday party. It was for a good cause. If you're ever in the area... And Elvis impersonation concerts are going on at the Palace Theater in Wisconsin Dells. Check it out. I did. Well, yeah, you did. And you mentioned that he kept whispering in your ear or, or touching your face or something. I don't know. He got the crowd involved. So what, what exactly does, he, does an Elvis impersonator do to work a crowd? Well, when, they're, when he's singing, I ain't nothing but a hound dog, all that kind of stuff, he's walking around talking to all the ladies. And, I How mean, can the he women, talk and sing at the I'm same time? You, I don't understand. It's actually impressive. The women... Love this guy. The I mean, it was well because these women were nineteen, the, twenty years old, looking at old fat Elvis on television when he was all coked out of his mind. Correct. But they and, still had a, and a this crush on him. And the impersonator was young, like mid thirties, probably like late fifties, early sixties, kind of Elvis Presley. So he wasn't the fat old guy after the movies Presley from like the seventies. So this is a good looking seventy, or this is a good looking Elvis Presley impersonator. He was dressed in. Very questionable attire for any for me anyway, but these women they they loved it. They were eating it up. How much longer can the world actually go ahead and open their arms to all these different Elvis impersonators? Vegas has a ton of them. Obviously, Memphis and Graceland. That this area. guy didn't even look like him either. I saw a picture <laughs> of him. He didn't not not look like him. I mean, it, I just don't understand. Like, how long does the spirit? 
of Elvis Presley live on? Is it when all the baby boomers die off that now all of a sudden it's like, boom, Elvis is dead too? Yeah, I think so. I don't think when, when you and I are in our 40s and 50s, I don't think we're going to be looking to go to Elvis Presley impersonators. I don't look to go to Elvis, and Pres- <laughs> Elvis Presley impersonators now, and I'm I, 28 years old. Correct, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I was searching for it, but I was there. I mean, I show up at things sometimes, and... It, I mean, my life, I, I, it's a whirlwind sometimes. And this weekend, I was at an Elvis Presley concert. Next weekend, who knows what I'll be at. I couldn't even tell you where I'm going to be at next week. And it's, it's a lot lot to bring on. There's no wrestling shows next weekend because we just got off of WWE Fastlane, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, do us a favor. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Podbean, if that's your taste as well. We're also on YouTube. We do have a brand new website at PencilPodcast.com. Literally one click, play every episode ever recorded. That is uh, 29 or 30 episodes now. I'm losing track. I don't even know anymore. This is 29. Horace Psychopath is coming on later for the second consecutive week. He's going to finish up our conversation that we had, a live conversation at the tank here 10 or 12 days ago, two weekends ago. Yeah, and tonight he actually touches on a lot of different things as far as his future in the pro wrestling business. Is it actually over? Is it, it Has it come to an end? And also we'll touch on an incident that happened at a independent show here in Minnesota where Horace will actually explain in his own words what happened. I don't want to give it away now, but he will be on at the second half of the podcast here for another hour, and that will conclude Horace's psychopath on the pencil. And that potentially could conclude Horace's psychopath path in pro wrestling i guess we won't know um until we listen to the second half of the podcast here tonight which um i think we talked about last week we had a good time recording it the second half is probably a little bit more um open given the fact that it got later in the night and um as it gets later on a friday night the tank gets a little loose the tank gets a little loose and and it's not the first time that's happened here and i can guarantee it sure as hell won't be the last time but we are at this point as of this recording, 33 days away from WrestleMania 31, coming off of Fastlane, which before we talk about Fastlane, let me just say that I have a dynasty going. A dynasty. A dynasty is when you do three things in a row, back to back to back. Dirt normally knows what I'm talking about, but this time he doesn't. It's all about me. I've beaten you three straight times in WWE pay-per-view predictions, pickums, whatever you want to call them. I was down 3-1 to one at one point. I considered giving up this podcast, giving up anything that I had to do with professional wrestling, and then I just went on a tear. It's it's going to be an expensive week. I haven't paid out the last two months, I don't believe. So I got, month, a, so yeah, yeah, no, I got two, two bottles that I owe you. It doesn't feel good. I, I really it thought... I mean, it sucks to be an idiot. The first 20 episodes of this show, I thought that I was smarter than you when it comes to the booking that was going on on TV, and I didn't know. I There was conversations going on within the Pencil Podcast about me never losing a, a pay-per-view after those three in a row that I won, and now I don't know if I'll ever win again. You didn't win three in a row. Well, I won three out of four. Okay, there you go. Uh, let's just, there's, there's one man here with the dynasty, and that's me at this point. So, uh, overall, pay-per-view was... Not a throwaway pay-per-view, I guess, in my mind. I don't believe that they just, I guess, what's the term I'm looking for? They just, like, half-assed it. It wasn't a SmackDown pay-per-view, basically, which was good. Right. I mean, there were some good things with with the pay-per-view. The Sting Triple H segment, although I feel there was too much action between the two superstars, I think it played a valuable role to look forward to WrestleMania 31. We both kind of assumed that they were going to set up the WrestleMania match. Not a contract signing, per se, but... A, a contract setting with a baseball bat and a sledgehammer, I guess, is just as good. Correct. I would say when you're looking at takeaways from Fastlane, there was some stuff that was unnecessary. But I think if you're taking away three or four things, you're going to say, okay, Sting and Triple H is finally official. Your boy, Randy Orton, came back. you got to imagine you were excited about that. And Wyatt finally brings up the actual Undertaker's name in his quest to fight the dead man at WrestleMania. And then the main event. So, I mean, when there's four or five things you can take away that were impactful. Don't forget Kid Cesaro and those tag straps. That's true. The tag straps did change up. And by me not bringing them up and the fact that I still think those titles have more to do with Total Divas than anything else right now. I mean, that's, that's why I didn't bring it up. Not a bad match, though. No, match was good. Let's let's touch on that main event because I, you and I both had agreed that in order to be effective in that match, in order to build WrestleMania 31 to kind of get the bad taste of the Royal Rumble out of people's mouths, Daniel Bryan had to do the job to Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns had to go over clean. To get- <laughs> Daniel Bryan had to try to do what The Rock couldn't. Correct. Have people cheer for Roman Reigns. And they, they still kind of, eh, a little bit. But I, the match itself was very good. 
it was a really I thought it was a really well worked match. You we watched it together live, and you being a, a former worker, a guy that's been in the ring and knows a little bit more about the I guess the ins and outs whenever you're actually putting together a match. You had said right away whenever the match started that Daniel Bryan was probably really excited about last night because or excuse me, yeah, last night. Uh Sunday night at the at Fastlane because he probably got to put together that match and pretty much run the show. Yeah. And if he did and that's accurate, he I mean he put together the best match he possibly could have, I thought. Daniel Bryan was the compass in that match for sure. He Definitely called, I believe, I would, su- I would assume the majority of it outside what the agents gave him in the back just because of the experience level is a, on a, a completely different level. Roman Reigns is, I guess, at the bottom of the totem pole, and Daniel Bryan's been around the block a time or two. Very good match. I think they accomplished exactly what they needed to accomplish leading into tonight's Monday Night Raw taping. And again, we're taping this on Monday. We'll be released tomorrow on Tuesday. But um, any more on that main event from Fastlane that you want, that any takeaway from it? I... Th- it was really well done, and I know that about 20 minutes into it, part of me really, and I told you this before the the whole pay per view started, that maybe Daniel Bryan's gonna win. Like me, they they had a little bit of doubt in my mind, and I still think, knowing where we're at, I don't. I'm not against Roman Reigns against Brock Lesnar, but I just think that the big guy versus big guy thing normally would have my backing. But I think Daniel Bryan against Brock Lesnar would sell so many. I mean, they're going to sell the same amount of tickets regardless. I mean, it's not about that, I guess. But I just think the eyes on the product would be more interested in a Daniel Bryan Brock Lesnar match. But that's not what we're going to get. It's so. not what we're going to get. But what, what I don't know what we're going to get when it comes to Daniel Bryan. And I think all signs are kind of pointing now, especially after Raw tonight, towards a Sheamus return, a heel return against Daniel Bryan. Because otherwise, he has nothing at this point. Because it looks like Dolph. And, and Ambrose, Ambrose are, and maybe Wade, and Wade Barrett, Barrett are probably in a triple threat. Something. Right. So there was a lot of rumblings about Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler at WrestleMania 31. I don't think that's even close to being a reality. I never really did buy into that. I always thought that Seamus Daniel Bryan was kind of the direction that they were going to go. We still haven't gotten Seamus back, though. And if they're going to have that match, he has to come back next month. Yeah. I mean, we've, we're 33 days away. We have four more Raws? Three more Raws? Yeah, three more Raws, I believe, and then it's Mania. So. Um, I mean, they gotta they gotta build quickly. Yeah. So we'll have no. There's four more because there's three in March and one next week. So yeah, those there's four more raws and they can bring him back and then have three raws to build it. But I mean, I, I we we're 12 minutes into this and you haven't even started talking about Randy Orton. I mean, I, it's been four anything. it's been four months and you've been waiting for this guy to come back. Yeah. I mean, I I, I when it hit last night in the opening match, I marked out in the kitchen and it was a little moment for me. But I did. I, I was really happy he came back. But then not a lot really happened between his return last night and through Monday Night Raw tonight. He teamed with he, the he authority. He got to open the show. That yeah, was he exciting. got to open the show. He teamed with the authority tonight, kind of teasing that he was going to beat up Seth Rollins, and he didn't tonight. And you mentioned to me, just you know, obviously in joking, but this is what WWE wants the casual fan to think is, Randy Orton's too smart to beat up Seth Rollins in a ring when there's Kane in the big show right next to him. And, and that's a great point. It is and Obviously, we understand that it's a scripted sport, but, I mean, that's, that's exactly the psychology of it. He doesn't want to go ahead and take on Seth Rollins when there is four others around that ring that could jump him at any time. So I, it's going to be Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, and WrestleMania. It's going to be awesome. It's how how be many, really, really how awesome. many RKOs is Jamie Noble going to have to eat before then? And he takes it good, too. <laughs> he does it. That guy's going to take a lot Between in the next three weeks. Between him and Joey Mercury jumping off the ropes and taking one. I mean, Orton gives it so well, too. He just hugs the body and goes to the ground. But it's good to see him back. It's good to hear voices again. And it's good to have another man involved in the storylines. Because with him and Sheamus both gone, and I'm not a big Sheamus guy myself, but they were lacking some star power on the roster. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't really realize it until he came back. But, I mean, I, during Fastlane, I was complaining here and there about what was going on in some of the matches. And I mean, the Ambrose thing, whatever, it makes sense for a long-term story, but I, did, I felt like that was a SmackDown match and a SmackDown finish on a pay-per-view, but whatever. Well, the pay-per-view had some weird finishes to begin it with did, anyway. Yeah. The Gold Dust Stardust finish was Somebody uh, messed something awkward. up, I assume. The but. Divas finish was kind of awkward as well. I don't know. That referee in that Gold Dust Stardust match, I'm not sure if he... Because Jim- he, he went to count three, and he like stopped, and then he called for the bell. So I don't know... <laughs> Jimmy Caderas has got to get on and tell us what happened there. Jimmy I, I assume probably, he knew. Jimmy, he probably talked about an aftermath of his show up in Canada on Wednesday after SmackDown, which is still beyond me why they get on Wednesdays. But yeah, it was it was that was really awkward. But 
I think as the show went on on Sunday, it got progressively better. And to, again, one of my biggest takeaways is you know I still like the kids Cesaro match, but I mean the Bray Wyatt thing when all of a sudden we heard the gong and we saw the casket, I immediately said that's not Taker. I I guarantee that's Bray Wyatt in there. And I'm just frustrated. Not that they're working each other at WrestleMania. I think we all knew that was coming, but I'm frustrated that they're playing up the casket. And I think I mentioned this last week that they did the casket match on SmackDown for Daniel Bryan and Kane. If a casket match is so special, why are you going to have it on a SmackDown? And the answer to some people might say is, well, it was the first SmackDown of Thursday nights again. I don't give a damn. My my biggest issue with, with it is that a casket match should mean that something ends. Kane was on TV the next week beating up people. Like it, like it, the the Cassic Mad makes sense for the Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. Whoever wins will probably be off TV for a while. You would think it's like an end of a career. It's like I don't know. It, it doesn't make sense to have that. Like the the Cassic match they're going to have makes sense. The Cassic match they had with Daniel Bryan and Kane is done, and they probably wish that we forgot about it. And I already have. Do you think that Taker will make an appearance on Raw before many, or do you think it's going to be some sort of Sting promo type thing where he says, "I accept the match for many." I don't think we see Taker until San Francisco. I don't think he walks out on any arena. I think he'll be there, and Bray Wyatt will be in the ring, and we have we and we had not seen him until March 29th. It's just it's kind of his promos are just phenomenal, and how he built the program with Taker without Taker being there solo by himself was brilliant. It's kind of funny, though, that he says, I'm going to wrestle you at WrestleMania when we haven't seen Undertaker for almost 365 days, and we're, they're just assuming, and, and I get it, he'll be there, but it's just an assumption that Taker's going to accept and, and show up in San Francisco and fight Bray Wyatt. I don't know, and we've talked about this week after week about how good this match is actually going to be. I know our guest tonight for part two would be extremely happy that Bray Wyatt has not been wrestling on TV. You know, that's good and has been strictly doing promo work and stick work, which is what he should be doing because he's a special attraction, a special attraction facing another special attraction in the at the end of March at Levi Stadium in San Francisco, California. Uh, other than that, on Fastlane, I didn't have a ton of takeaway from it. I mean, it was, it was a solid pay-per-view. It was a solid Sunday night. It wasn't anything spectacular outside the finish I thought was great. Um, the Sting Triple H thing was, like I said, I thought there was a little too much there, but... I didn't like that there wasn't much follow-up. Like tonight? Yeah, or just... I don't feel that we... We still don't know why Sting is there. We never what, will. And and that's an issue for me, I guess. We won't because they're not putting a microphone in his hand for whatever reason. And, and I get the booking concept of not having him speak. It's a, And Triple H, I think, is speaking for him. I get it. You're here because you want to take me down because I took down WCW. Yeah, and I just haven't heard him confirm that i guess it would be nice to hear him confirm why he's here but if that's what we're just supposed to assume i i guess i can take that triple h's promo on him at Fastlane. great phenomenal he's great trips is he's great on the stick man when he's not don't give him 25 minutes but if you tell him seven minutes get your point across he's pretty good i'd like to see trips and orton Mm. one more time oh, man one, one more time one, once in a lifetime monday night raw tonight we saw well, what did we see we see orton we we uh, get with the the authority situation primetime players back together whatever cena does not get a a rematch at wrestlemania which i think exactly zero people believe well yeah they'll, they'll definitely get, he'll get a rematch somehow some way uh whatever but i think you're you're upset with that finish at fast lane with him passing out i just thought that if he's gonna lose it, like, it protected him. It protected Cena. What What do we need to protect Cena for? Because like, he's the superstar of this company. He's the face of the franchise. He could lose every match for six months, and he's still going to be. So why do we have him you get mean, kicked like, in the like nuts? The way that Lesnar kicked his ass at SummerSlam. Yeah, he could. He, he could lose every match, and Daniel Bryan could lose every match. They're still going to be fine. What do I, I just? I think I would like it better if Rusev wouldn't have won in a dirty manner. But I'm okay with it. It'll be a rematch at WrestleMania 31. Cena's going to be the... How weird does that sound? Your United States champion, uh, John Cena. Yeah, John Cena's going to go over Bray Wyatt last year, and now Wyatt's just going to jump in the Undertaker game, and now he's going to go over Rusev. What's, 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 with all the internet wrestling community and all the people out there who absolutely hate on John Cena and think he has too much TV time, and he's such a big star that they make him sick, he's going to go on like second or third at Mania. For the second straight year. Yeah, he does. He hasn't main evented Mania since... He worked, 27, 28 which with The Rock. The Rock. 
be, people need to get off his ass, get off his dick. I mean, he's out there working for the company, doing what's best for the company. Selling merch. Selling a lot of ugly merchandise, <laughs> but he never gives up. Never has. He never didn't. Has. He didn't on Sunday either. He didn't. He just passed out, baby. Yep. He's gonna. Uh, and he uh, woke up to Nikki Bella. You, uh, Tough that, life. A lot worse things to do. You think that'll be a a uh, submission match at WrestleMania? Like Nikki Bella and John Cena? No, Rusev. Rusev. John Cena. Oh. Um, you mean like the the STF versus the act? I I don't know. I well, I mean, Cena's been doing the yes lock and no, and Chris Benoit's finisher for it, like six months. It only <laughs> makes sense for Rusev to be pinned. That's the only thing that makes sense booking wise. That's not going to be a submission match, you idiot. You should come on. Think of <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like you went down the last three months in a row. No one's ever pinned Rusev. That's been the bill since it started. Now all of a sudden you're like, you think it's going to be a submission match? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to think about that again? Or you, you good now? All right, maybe it won't be. Okay, it's not going to be a submission match. Cena's going to go over one United States title. It's going to be really, really weird. Maybe he'll put the spinner back on it. I don't know. Should I be hope interesting. So. What else happened on Raw tonight that's worthy, newsworthy? Golden Stardust are going to have their match at WrestleMania, I would assume. Yeah, they'll have another match at WrestleMania, which will be, yeah, you know. Oh, they did talk about the Andre the Giant second annual Battle Royal Memorial. Yeah, who's going to get thrown in that shit? Well, right now it's uh, Curtis Axel and Ryback are your first two entrants. <laughs> Axel Mania. He came out in, with a Hulk Hogan type of a shirt. Curtis Axel on the mic, though. He's is, not bad. He's really good. I mean, he makes he, and I like how he starts his promos with "Do not change the channel." He still he still has not been eliminated from the Royal Rumble. No, he hasn't. And he he, he alluded to being like twenty nine days and like thirteen minutes and forty two seconds or something <laughs> tonight, and it was good. A good little promo. No one really. But it makes sense that he's gonna be in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Yeah, R- Rowan and Harper will be in there. It'll it'll suck probably. I would think. But uh, then they announced a, a six man tag match for SmackDown this week. It's this, the rematch from what we saw at Fastlane. Other than that, I think they're kind of slow build man- to Mania. I think next week we'll get a little bit more, and the week after we'll get a little bit more, and just kind of give us a little bit to chew on each week until we finally get to that go-home show, which will be a lot of talking, I would assume, a lot of promo time. I bet you there's probably 25 minutes of pro wrestling on that Raw before Mania. Do you think we get Lesnar two more times before Mania or yes. once? we get him two more times before Mania. That'll be fun. You have here. to. I hope so. I love his music. Because, I mean, if his last date is Mania, you've got to use him up. <laughs> you've got to use him all up, man. I don't want him to, We don't need to have any dates whenever he's in UFC. I'm just excited for next week now, and I'm excited for whatever date WrestleMania 31 is. It's your birthday weekend. We got people coming to the tank that weekend. It's gonna be one of those weekends where Monday, when you wake up, you're not gonna feel so hot. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to have some drinks at the tank. We're gonna throw a little tank party on Saturday. My birthday is the following Wednesday, and right smack dab in the middle is gonna be some WrestleMania Sunday night. It's gonna be it's gonna be a long weekend, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get it done. WrestleMania starts at 6 p.m. our time, so it'll be a four-hour show, which means if we're playing a drinking game, it's going to be a long, mm. long day. Might want to put it for ETB on Monday. I don't know. I mean, I can't. I I, I got to keep my ETB. I use that. I got to use that shit for good days. Yeah, no, I'm I'm going to work on Monday. You got to wake up and get to work. I might go to the gym. Well, if you're going to go to the gym, which is a great segue, is where we're going to go because. Typically, we do this on a Tuesday when we record. Today, we are it's obviously a Monday, so I did legs this morning. What did, did you work on anything? Today yeah, I did. Besides, ba- I had back besides day. Besides sucking on the basketball court, you did uh, back day. I did, I, a game day is not an off day for me, so even though I was terrible on the basketball court, I was in the gym over my lunch break. I had a, it was a good back day. It was like th- 36 minutes, and it was I, I was shredded. Perfect, perfect. Well, I got something about this thing, because this week's Body Guy Minute brought to you by iForce Nutrition. Actually, I just went upstairs and took an, uh, an iForce Nutrition product here right before I go to bed. It helps me sleep at night. Um, head over to iForceNutrition.com, type in promo code PENCIL30, receive 30% off your entire order, and they help. They also help us out at the show, and they kick back a little bit to us. Easiest way to get there is you can go right to iForceNutrition.com or head over to the new PencilPodcast.com website. There's a link right on the homepage with their logo. Just click on that. It'll take you right over to the shopping center. But one thing, Dirt, I was at our gym in Oakdale uh, uh, the other day. I don't remember what I was doing up there or why I was there, but it was a, it was a you night You were probably time. getting fucking big. Yeah, that's exactly what I was doing, but there was this kid there, and I don't know how old he was. What his deal was, he was skinny, he was tall, but what he would do is he would put his dumbbells down on a flat bench while he was resting, and then he'd pick them up and he would do whatever the hell he was doing, but he was using a flat bench as a rest spot or a rest hold for his dumbbells. Now, that's one thing. I was like, all right, well, that pisses me off because A, I wanted to use that flat bench, and B, 
When he got done, Derek, when he put his dumbbells down, he looked in the mirror, he screamed to himself, he had headphones in, he threw his hands around his body and started walking really, really fast around the gym like he was on a mission, like he was trying to prove something. You see these people ever? Oh, uh, man. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of information right there. Uh, just... No, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody do that. Then he proceeds to pick up his dumbbells, put them away, thank you very much, goes over to the leg press machine, puts two plates on each side, does five to ten presses, whatever it was, gets up, yells, and then walks really, really fast around the leg press machine again, listening to whatever music he was listening to. I would presume it was either Wiz Khalifa or Drake or something because he was rapping, and I just don't understand. The kid was doing literally two plates on each side, screaming and sprinting around the place. It wasn't sprinting. He was just walking really, really fast like he was about to walk up to somebody, punch them in their fucking face, go back and do his 180 pounds, get back up and yell again that he's the best in the world. Did he have good form? No. I mean, well, how do you have bad form on a leg press machine? You're, you're, I, you're, you're lit up about this. I, I wasn't there. I am lit up about this because <laughs> I'm trying to pay attention to the weights that need to be lifted, my weights, and there's actual weight on this bar, and this kid thinks it's goddamn dancing with the stars around the gym, and I don't got time for that. If he was getting in your way, I understand your frustration, and he sounds like he was distracting you. He I, looked like a douche. Okay, and we don't want that. Nobody, ain't, ain't, I, no, ain't I, nobody got time. What for I that. need to do is I need to start my own body guy gym, have my own body guy minute playing on the, the the YouTube gimmick, and anybody who comes in my gym that I don't like, I tell them to leave. If they don't leave, I physically instruct them to leave. It just it makes me sick when I go into these gyms and people are just I just I mean some people are just fucking crazy. How do you really feel? I mean they're just crazy. You're there to get big. You're there to look good. You're not there to act like a, an insane man running through the quad with your dick hanging out. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Anyway, if you're that guy, if you're that person in the gym that looks like a douche, Don't knock it in. off. Stop it. Or do, do me a solid. Go home and do P90X like another douche because I ain't got time for any of this stuff. Go to iForceNutrition.com. Pencil 30. 30% off your entire order. Don't be a douche. Order supplements from iForceNutrition.com. Derek, you got any parting words before we head over and send it back to the, the, the podcast from last week with Horst and finish it up? Oh, gosh. we got. No, I'm not going. I, what do I I'm going to excited for like our, our WrestleMania, our road to WrestleMania on the podcast. Like this, I know. This, this is our first year, first year of we road to WrestleMania. We can't screw it up, man. I got no more Elvis coming up, so I shouldn't be distracted. I, uh, I got state high school wrestling coming up this weekend I'm going to go back to Madison for. High school state wrestling in, in Wisconsin is a big deal, so I'm going to go watch my cousin play. And by play, I mean wrestle. You don't play wrestling. He's going to play wrestle. You play, you play basketball? Yeah, you play, I mean, you attempt really to. Really poorly. You attempt to. Well, Travis is on Instagram, at Travis Mester on Instagram, at Travis Mester on Twitter. I'm at Real Rennie D at both Instagram and Twitter. We're at Pencil Podcast on Twitter, backslash Pencil Podcast on Facebook. You can get all these links on our brand new website, PencilPodcast.com. Our Instagram account's on there, our Twitter, our Facebook YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, anything and everything. And also just one click to play any podcast episode on the website. It's pretty pretty legit. So if you get a chance, though, hit that five-star thing. Give us a good review. Tell your friends about us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it might be. Until next week, you guys go ahead and do us a huge favor as Horse and Psychopath coming up for part two. Strap in, strap up, hang on tight. Horse and Psychopath is coming up next. Hey guys, my name is Nick Ragner. I'm AC Riley. I'm Jesse Von Rudin. And we're co-hosts of the show Grapple Talk, where we aim to bring you the latest and most in-depth analysis on the independent wrestling scene. We like to give everybody the idea of what's going on in the independent scene in the Midwest. We also like to talk with plenty of guys in the Midwest and uh, pick their brains a little bit. It's all about promotion and education here on Grapple Talk. So make sure you tune into Grapple Talk any day of the week. You can find us on Podbean or on iTunes. Just search... Grapple Talk. Hello, Pencil Podcast listeners. This is Chris from Spot Monkey Media. Now, if you're a professional wrestler, a promoter, or even a business owner, and you need someone to design your next t-shirt, event poster, 8x10, business cards, anything you need, Spot Monkey Media is graphic design for the wrestling professional. Go to spotmonkeymedia.com, send me an email, message me on Facebook, tweet me, Snapchat me your junk, anything you need, Spot Monkey Media. Create your legacy.
back here in the tank in College Grove, Minnesota. I am Renny D, the professional wrestler, again with Travis Dirty Mester, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat around the bush. You are my hero. And I, I I mean people will be like, What? And no, it is not what. In independent wrestling, I had one guy I looked up to. I have I have had many mentors in pro wrestling, but there's one guy who I've looked up to, who I've respected, who I have Ask their opinion and their, I guess, their wrestling mind more so than anybody else. And it was you, Horace. Right. And you know this, I think. I've, I've told you this numerous times. I think my last match with you was at First Avenue Wrestling last yeah, January, February. And I will tell the world, I was in tears before the show started. I was in tears in my bed. I will, and I don't know if I actually told this to a lot of people before. I was bawling. Dirt, you know this. I was yep. bawling my ass off. Because to me, this was not like my last match, but this was the last show. And again, no offense to any other promotion I worked for, but this was my last show where I knew that the match that I was going to have. It was, it was, the, last, it was the last match that you were going to be in front of a crowd that you cared about in front of people well, not, that, not that in front of people that you had wrestled in front of numerous times and in front of a, the amount of people that you wrestled yeah, in front of. Yeah, I think it was more so of like... Okay, so I've wrestled in front of many crowds, and the primetime wrestling crowd, which was my last match, has been faithful, and there's nothing against them whatsoever. But when I envisioned my last professional wrestling match, I envisioned one of two opponents. John Johnson. John Johnson, who, one of the best wrestlers one of the best, in, in, in Minnesota. One I've of the seen, best wrestlers I've, in Minnesota, one of the best wrestlers I've ever been in the ring with. I've seen him go many times, and many John times. Johnson is the man. Love that man. Great Love man. That man. Great man, but it, it's, it, I've shared the ring with so many people. In 12 years, and 11 years at this point, I guess, so many people in the ring, I don't think I've had a chemistry with a man more so than you, Horace. And, and, what, and what makes it so important to you, Rennie, and to me, is that we don't have to talk to him over the phone, and we don't have to talk to him over Skype. He's sitting here with us in Cottage Grove. He's sitting here in the tank. Horse, the psychopath, you're sitting here with us. What was it like wrestling, Ryan? I want to hear him ask you some questions about what he loved about it. Here's yeah, you know, in, in part one we talked about a lot of your USWA stuff, a lot of your old school stuff. We're trying to get into more of that too. But Johnny, I need to tell you, like I've I sent you a message after our last match at First Avenue, and you you've read it, obviously you respond back to it. But to tell you in person, because when I said bye to you that night, it was kind of like hey bye, right? Like we thought we'd see each other again we haven't seen each other since that match correct. it has been a year correct and i have never looked up to somebody the way i looked up to you i have in the match that we went out at first avenue or pro wrestling battleground there was just something there there was we didn't have to talk we didn't have to pre-plan basically anything we could go out there and do whatever the fuck we wanted to do and it just it felt special. And the last match that we had together was at First Avenue with Eric Cannon's first wrestling, which is on RF Wrestle video. Palooza. Wrestle Palooza 3. You were in rough shape that night. Yep, pinch nerve. Pinch in nerve in your neck. Yes. And you told me specifically, I don't know how much I can do tonight. And my thought process was, I don't care. Tonight's going to be special because I knew this was one of my last matches. I knew I was in the ring with you, and I wanted to make it special for not only the fans at First Avenue, special for yourself, but special for me. And to this day, if I could write down a list of the top five matches I've ever had, I will write that down as probably number one. Because it was just... And, and I don't mean to put you on blast or, or whatever else, but you and I both embraced each other after the match. And we talk about this on Twitter, how we don't want to do this. And hey, we're breaking the fourth wall. But you and I had a, a, a good embrace after the match. I'm telling you, I, I've never really had a chance to tell you to this day. And, and I'll tell you now, I'm never more grateful for a match in my entire life than I spent with you that night. At first Avenue, we had 12 minutes, and I loved every little minute, every little second of it. 
And it, I just wish I could bottle up that feeling I had and then hold on. And I do. I hold on to it forever. I talk about it all the time. Do I not, Dirt? All the time. All the time. You and I, for only having two matches in the ring, we did something special in my eyes. And I truly believe the First Avenue audience who's accustomed to seeing dives and flips and these fucking crazy ass moves, we didn't have to do a lot of that. But I, watching the, the match, if you can go watch an RF video, I have it on my computer. I will say, and this is not me just trying to toot my own horn or tooting your horn, we had the best match on that show. I just want to say I'm grateful for two things in accordance with that. One, I'm grateful to Pencil Podcast for supplying the Jägermeister yeah, buddy. On, on this episode. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, and part two, I want to say I'm grateful that you carried my ass that night. That's not true. You did. That's you not did. True. You did indeed. You carried me, and uh, that is the mark of a true professional. And we can talk about – I mean we, we sit here and we talk about off air about how much more we would love to share the ring with, and, and maybe maybe we're not done. Who knows? But we had two matches, and I've heard you tell me this before, and I will tell you this too. In my matches of my entire career, 11 years, I can think about every little place, every little city I went to, every person I wrestled, and no discredit to anybody I wrestled. But you, my friend, and I, we didn't have to talk about shit. We went out there, and we worked. We wrestled, and it was something that we did based on crowd reaction. Literally, like I looked you in the eyes. And I knew exactly what we were going to do next. It was like one of those – it's one of those weird things that you have. And I don't know, Dirt, in your right. world, like if you have this with anybody. But Horace and I had this chemistry in wrestling where it was – he knew how maybe good I was. And I'm not – again, not trying to toot my own horn, but I absolutely knew toot how it. good toot, he was. Toot it as loud as you want. You we're on the Pencil good. Podcast. You it, can it, toot it, it as loud as you it want. It was a professional thing, and it's – I did want, and, and I will just throw it back to one spot where I was supposed to take the, and maybe you remember this horse, where I was supposed to take the buckle to my sh- my shoulder, and I was not supposed to fall out the ring, and I fell out the fucking ring because I took that buckle like a, I took it like a champ, <laughs> I took it hard, and I came back in and not once did we miss a beat, and it was just absolutely fantastic. We stayed in our time, we did exactly what we wanted to do, and to this day, I think. If I had to sit there and say what were some of the best matches I've ever had, and I've just said this before, it is definitely the tops of the top with you. And for you to come on my show and Travis's show and share your life experience in pro wrestling, I can't be more grateful. I appreciate it. I'll say this, and then let's move off from this subject, But because we could probably sit there and uh, slap each other on the back all night <laughs> if you gave us a chance. But uh, I will say that I think what's ironic and you you didn't touch on this was after our very first match together, I was the one who had tears in my eyes. Yeah, if you remember that, because I was so grateful. I felt like I finally had had a great match, and it had been years. I felt like in my mind since I had had a great match, and I was really proud that night, and I was very very appreciative of being a part of the pro wrestling industry. And uh, I knew at that minute that our chemistry was fantastic. It's ironic that we would wrestle again and that you probably, although not outwardly emotional, were probably equally as emotional as I was from match one. But, yes, we have had amazing chemistry, and it's too bad that we couldn't do something that had TV and could have done like a fun six-month program (laughs) and then done some stuff. And and the chemistry that you guys show in the ring, it it really is remarkable. I the closest thing that I can ever equate to that is I played some semi to low competitive basketball. That brings me to the point of thinking you go out and you play a basketball game with guys that you know. You know they know how to play basketball. You know they know when to back cut, they know when to pass the ball they know when to shoot the ball that kind of thing the way that you guys describe the way that it is in the ring it really does still today shock me and i don't really understand it i don't know if there's a quick way for either of you in a couple sentences or a couple explanations to say 
this is why it works. But even when I watch it on TV and when I talk to you, Rennie, or I talk to guys that have been in the business for, for, for so many years, when I go out and play a basketball game and you play pickup basketball or you play a competitive game, there are things that I look across the floor from me or people don't know certain things and you just get frustrated. How do you know when you're in the ring, when you're with somebody that you don't have to talk about it beforehand and you can just go? How, how do you know that? Do you feel that before the match or does it have to get into it before you actually know what's happening? I th- I th- I think probably Rennie will probably give the same answer I will. I think you feel it within about 90 seconds. You just, you feel it. I mean, just some people you you click with and you know that you can tear it down. And it really only takes about 90 seconds in there. You just, the feel, the vibe, and off you go. And then, and, and adversely. Is, is, is that even, is that even if you're, like you guys have talked about that, hey, if we're in the fourth match of the night, or in the second match of the night and we have eight minutes or we have 12 minutes or how about if you guys are in the main event and you have 25 minutes, is it still that 90 second or one, one or two minutes where you know, Hey, we've got it tonight. Is that how you feel? Yeah, absolutely. It's still, for me, it's, I can tell right away. I mean, not, I mean, I, yes, I can tell, I can tell right away. And, and, and adversely, I can also tell, when I don't have chemistry with somebody in the same amount of time. <laughs> Renny? <laughs> I 100% agree. Like, within 90 seconds, like you said, I, mean, I wouldn't even say it's less than 90 seconds. I mean, as soon as we got out in the ring and you had your entrance and we got in the ring, I, I'm, I'm still alluding to First Avenue, not taking anything from our, away from our, our Battleground match because I think Battleground match was our first match. We knew kind of what we wanted to do. At First Avenue, at this show, Dirt, you were there with me for a little bit of time before you decide to exit to the depot. I went, uh, I went and got smashed next door. It was enjoyable. All of the above was enjoyable. But, the matches, the getting smashed, but go on. But I think when we talk about a match or a show like First Avenue where you have quote-unquote luchadors, I guess you could say, or high flyers, and you have comedy, a guy like Horace and a guy like me need to look at that situation and say, what can we do tonight? That's different than every other match on the show. And I honestly, if we can watch that match when we're done here, watch the whole show. We went out there with a different mindset thinking like, let's make this real. Because at some point when you talk pro wrestling or you watch a pro wrestling show, there is a lot of gimmicky type of wrestling, I guess. I don't know really know how to put it, but we had a different mindset that we didn't have to talk about. We just went out there and, and Horace came out, he did his entrance. And when he did his entrance and he went through the crowd, I remember this like yesterday, he walked through the crowd, people were chanting, Horace. you get it all, all, all day. I have I really mean, awesome fans. Yeah. Awesome fans. And I'm at this point, I still felt like I was this guy who nobody knew, but at, at the same point, like I think people knew who maybe who I was, but they knew who this guy was. And he elevated me in this. And that's what I'm so grateful for is the fact that Horace the Psychopath is a legend in pro wrestling, not only on the indie level, but on the professional wrestling level in general. And for the fans to chant Horace, and they were, this was your first match back actually in First Avenue in quite a while, because you were on all the first shows when Jerry Lynn was there, when Cesaro was there, and, and all these awesome names. And now finally, you and I get a chance to wrestle a match together. And I watched you walk through the crowd and I'm thinking to myself, and I'm standing in the ring, Travis. And I'm thinking, all right, all right, Randy, this is your time to take advantage of kind of horse's spotlight a little bit to elevate your life. But at this point, I'm thinking you don't have much time left. I, I knew the, the light was in the tunnel and I knew that this match was supposed to mean something special to me. And it was to this day after and and no secret and and the people might not know this like you were banged up horse and we talked about this a little bit like you had neck issues and let's not care ourselves in pro wrestling you have neck issues you are Travis you took a bump you you ran your head I I, I took I took four bumps in twelve minutes and the <laughs> the the second the second bump that I took I I sat in the corner I tried to throw my back against the mat. And anybody that thinks that 
pro wrestling is fake or that it doesn't hurt can get in the ring and I will happily watch you and you can do what I did and act like it doesn't hurt. It, it, it hurts. If you, do it, if you do it wrong, there are serious injuries that can happen. Very serious injuries. And Horace has been doing this 20 plus years. And I knew Eric Cannon gave me a chance to work you, wrestle you, Horace. And I couldn't be more ecstatic in my life. And he was texting me all week saying this was going to be a no-holds-barred, no-disqualification match. He was sending me pictures of, of thumbtacks. And, I, in my, and I don't know if you know this, Horace, but in my head I was thinking, we're going to have these, one of these. Cannon like, was doing this? Yeah, Cannon oh. was doing this. One of these like <laughs> death matches. And I, I don't like death matches. And we've talked about this when we had we, Dysfunction We've talked here. about this before. But Dysfunction's been on here on our podcast. I love about, Dys. Hello, Dys. Uh, dysfunction is <laughs> talking about those death thing. matches. Here's the thing. I don't like death matches. I've never been a fan of them. But if there was any man that I would ever put my body in that sort of situation for, it was you. Because you would take care of me. We would make sense. We would do it right. And we would fucking do something in this match that was extremely special we had what 11 12 minutes i believe so and your neck was fucked up <clears throat> indeed and how'd we do we did really well very I, well i liked it it was good i loved it i loved it i loved it and the, the fact is like i loved it for twofold there's our second match so i knew we could build on the first match we had but but again i alluded this in, in part one last week the fact that Horace was a guy who never had to. I've met numerous people in the professional wrestling business who have come and gone, who have been a veteran, who just thought that they don't need to give back to the youth of the professional wrestling business, who didn't care whether or not I did anything special with my career. But you cared, and you took the time to sit down with me and discuss how Rennie D, as a pro wrestler, could be a better professional, could be a better wrestler, could be a better person to the fans. And I would love, and I will say this, when I walked away from pro wrestling on March 28th, I walked away a better person because of the advice I got from you, Horace the Psychopath. And I will be forever, forever grateful for the stuff that you gave me. And that's not just uh, just because you're sitting in, in the tank right now. I'm not sitting here like trying to. There are to a lot of fish wind. in here. There are a lot of fish in here. The very pretty one. But you know, there's only one that we care about. This is not the first time I've told you this. Like you know that I will tell you and I will tell John Johnson. Uh, there are minimal people who have given back to me the way that I needed it, and you were the man. I think more so than anybody else, who took the time to take a young kid under his shoulders. And teach me the lessons, teach me the politics, teach me the way to be successful in professional wrestling. And for that, you are the fucking man. Ah, you're too kind. I'm not too kind. Put, putting him over. Putting he, him over. He has, man. Big time. Like twenty minutes worth of it. It's awesome. I, I could go for I could go for more in twenty minutes. No, but honestly, I mean, I think it comes down to information is only as good as the person who listens to it. So the credit, spin it around. You have to listen and take that, those words of advice, and you obviously did that, and that's part of being great. Part of being great. I wish I was as great as I, I thought I was. My, my question is, from two professional wrestlers to a guy who's never wrestled professionally, never been in a ring for a, a match that really mattered, what I want to know is – the difference there are professional sports like basketball i i play i play a ton of basketball there are 10 people on the court there are people that care about the game there are people that know how to play the game there are people that don't know how to know how to play the game there are guys who are unbelievable athletes that i play with every week that don't know what they're doing but they're just out on the court but they're really really good there are plenty of professional wrestlers that are great athletes but might not know what they're doing in the ring. When I'm on the court with nine other people, if there's four or five of them or seven or eight of them that know what they're doing, but there's one that doesn't, it can mess everything up just in the matter of fact of knowing how to run an offense, how to do this, how to do that. 
when do you know when you have one guy that you can do it with every time you're in the ring with? Because that is, it's still shocking to me when I watch it on TV and I'm watching wrestling every week or I watch a guy like, and I've, and I've put him over on this podcast and time and time again, Adolf Ziggler. I love that guy. How do you know when you're with somebody that can really help put you over, but help not make you look bad at the same time? Because in, in basketball, it's so different. And there's, there's just so many things that I don't know. And I don't want to, I don't want you to compare, compare basketball to wrestling. You can't but though, right? In basketball, like if I'm working, if I'm going against you, I don't want you to look good. If I'm wrestling against Horace, I want to look good, but I also want him to look like a fucking superstar. In basketball, you don't do that. That's the difference, and that's the difference that I think a lot of people that watch don't always understand because when they see this guy go out every Monday and get pinned in 25 seconds and think he's useless or they think this guy is not a talent that is even worth having any TV time – or you go to an independent wrestling show and you say, oh, that guy sucks because he lost to him. Winning and losing isn't about what you guys do, and it's so about what I do or what I like to do on a weekly basis and on a competitive basis. You guys are still competitive, but where does that line get crossed? I just think it's all about performance. I mean... I don't know. I mean, it's a deep question. That was so deep. It's like Dr. Phil on the Doc, podcast. Dr. Dirt on the podcast. I, I'm distracted by well, the fish, though. Let, let, let's, let's, let's not simplify it, but Horace, we need to ask you, because you are a... I'm not going to beat around the bush. You're a fucking genius when it comes to pro wrestling. Whether you don't want to admit it or not, like I know you're not a guy who toots your own ego. You're not a guy who sits there and pushes the button and says, I'm the best in the world. But Jesus Christ, Horse, you are great. You are fantastic. You are the reason a lot of people in the Midwest, again, for those of you who listen around the country, Horse is like the guy in your territory who is the staple of the pro wrestling business. And I know you don't want to admit that because you are a very humble guy. But you are you are the man. You are the fucking man in pro wrestling. And there are guys like myself who have always looked up to you. There are guys who don't ask you questions because either they don't care, they're scared, or they don't give a shit about pro wrestling. I'm I'm the Crash Davis of Minnesota Independent Wrestling. Do your research on that, kids. <laughs> but tell us what what is it? Why do you care? About this business so much. Uh, I love pro wrestling, but I, I care about the people that care about pro wrestling. And that's, you know, we could talk about that all day. It's just the pure love of, it's the pure love of pro wrestling. And I've always said for, for my taste, when pro wrestling is good, no matter at what level, it can't be touched. And when pro wrestling is bad at this level or above, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you see the fact. You see the fact. So you've been removed from pro wrestling since last March? September. September. Oh, sorry. Way well, okay, way off. September. Have you kept up with the product since September? Uh, not locally. Uh, nationally, yes. So what? what – why did you decide to take a break from local – independent wrestling because i there okay be, before i let you answer that i've been and there's this is the question people ask me when i when i promoted the fact that you're going to be on the podcast and and people are like well ask them this and ask them that you're my friend and i've I, i've said this like you can count your friends on less than one hand in this business friends that you could turn to to say horse let's go out and have a drink tonight or horse let's go talk about football let's let's talk about something other than pro wrestling and I was gone. I was in Milwaukee. I wasn't around. But I don't myself know why you decide to take a break. And in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, there might be some reasons why I know why. And I'm not asking you about your last match. I'm asking you, first off, why you decided to take your extended absence, I guess, from pro wrestling. And, and what was it that kind of said, 
I need to step back for a little bit and just say, I need to cool off from the business that I love. I just think for the last year, year and a half, I mean, first of all, I'm just extremely banged up, um, more so than I've ever been in wrestling. And we're all banged up, but, I mean, this is the worst I've ever been. And uh, so from just from a physical standpoint, <clears throat> it's become more and more difficult to perform at the level that you feel like you can perform at. So that that was certainly a huge aspect. And then the other aspect is just that I feel like wrestling has went so far away from what it was when I got in the business that there's only so many years you can turn a blind eye to it and stay quiet. And, you know, I'm not a guy who is going to make a big scene in the locker room. And I, I, I never considered myself a locker room leader in a, in a verbal sense. Um, and when you're in a locker room and you, and you're beat up and you're just not feeling it anymore, you're not feeling the product, you're not feeling what you're doing, it just becomes harder and harder to cope. It becomes harder and harder to, to, to convince yourself to go wrestle. You start questioning why you're doing it. What's the game? I love that 15 to 20 minutes in the ring. Curtain to curtain is awesome. It's better than sex. It's better than drinking. Liar. No, no. Better than it drugs. Is. It's better than music. That 20 minutes, is, or whatever it is. Better than Garth Brooks? Yeah. Probably a tie. Oh, a tie? I'll take a tie. No. It's orgasmic, yeah. man. Um, uh, it really is. I mean, it's it's like taking a, a stimulant that you, you've, you've never had before. However, there's, there's a lot of other things that come with being a pro wrestler, travel, even if it's just an hour-long car ride. I mean, I was getting to the point where I absolutely dreaded the day of a show. I wake up and you just kind of realize you maybe just want to stay home and go to the local dive and have a few beers and listen to the iTunes machine. And it just caught up, you know, or it just became a part where I just I did not want to be there. I did not want to be around the guys. And it's nothing personal you know, based off of one person, it's just the business in general and, 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 you know, and then you, it affects your performance because you can't bring that energy. You can't bring that desire and that enthusiasm. And, and not like this is any big surprise is that I had to mask a bit of that with maybe having to have a few drinks before wrestling, which is, you know, completely unprofessional and, and, and not the wisest choice, but, you become you, you start to self medicate. You start trying to talk yourself into doing something that you quietly loathe. And uh that was at the point I was at and I just knew I needed to take a break. Now I will say this isn't the first time I've taken a break. I've taken three three during my twenty three years or tw- oh, twenty four plus. I've ta- t- two different times I've taken almost an entire year off. So it's just that time to uh, recharge the batteries and figure out if uh, this is something you still want to do. I still love pro wrestling. I still love being in the ring. I still feel like I could go another 10 years in ring. Uh, I don't know if I want to sit in a locker room anymore. And, and, there, and there's nothing there's nothing that I will hold against you from a guy that wants to sit, maybe take a, take a break, go to go to a – an establishment every now and again, like a Jersey's bar in Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota. I love Jersey's. Jersey's. It's a beautiful establishment. They have live music every Friday and Saturday night. They got country music, which obviously I love, and that's the kind of stuff I live for. Are we are we at the point in our conversation? And you can tell me, Rennie, if I'm not, if I'm in a bad spot. But I would like to see maybe if Johnny, maybe if. Horace would like to do a little name recognition. Maybe if we could throw a couple names out, see what he says about them for a couple sentences. I there there's there's some guys because I know how much you watch the current product, and I would love to know what you think about the people that we talk about every week. Fire away, let's go. You think that's a fire? Is, is that a, nice, a situation we're in right now? That works. That it's works. A, it's a good situation. A good, it's a good situation. situation. Okay, I'll go first. 
I'll throw somebody out. And if Rennie wants to throw somebody out next, that's completely acceptable. If anybody else that's at the tank right now thinks of somebody and says, hey, I'd like to know what Horace thinks about this person on the product right now. Because obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, do you watch a lot of WWE on TV, the Monday Night Raw, any NXT, any SmackDown, anything like that, pay-per-views? Do you watch a lot of that right now? I watch Raw every week. I watch SmackDown every week, and I would probably say I watch every other WWE pay-per-view. I see very little of NXT. All right. So the first person that I'm going to throw out at you is just to see, hey, give me a couple sentences. Give me a couple thoughts on this person. Triple H. Wow. <laughs> Did I start it off too hard? <laughs> there, there's just so many things to say about Triple H, good, I know, and, good, I know. good and bad, that um, skip. <laughs> okay, I've, I've, We're skipping I've Triple one. H. Who, Lee, Lee, our, our, smooth, our guy. Smooth talking Lee. Smooth our talking guy, our guy right. Lee, who has been on our podcast in the past. He has been with us after the Royal Rumble. He was with us. And he had a lot of uh, information that he wanted to give. And I tried. He, he, li- he lives here at the tank more often than not. I do. Are you in charge Who, of the fish? No, we, we, we take custody, shared custody on him. First of all, there is no shared custody. I am in charge of the fish. But I did buy three of them. He bought most of them. I care about the only one that matters. But, Lee, who right. is the one, who's the one person that you'd like to hear so, his opinion on? Okay, so I, I want to bring in not necessarily a person, but a situation. Can I do that quick? I, I think that's accessible. Can, Horace, is that accessible? I like it. Now, because I, I only get to see stuff once in a while, what is our thought on this new I, – I don't even know him barely because I haven't watched a lot of wrestling, but Sting. Sting coming back into it. I don't know much about Sting. What, what's, what's the thought with Sting coming back in, guys? I think as – as as we're all fans of pro wrestling, it's obviously it's exciting and it's interesting. It's an intriguing proposition. Um, What's he gonna do? I, I, I mean, think the question for me becomes: What is Sting capable of in the ring? And that probably will tell the tale of whether this was a success or not. Because I I believe if if the performance is not there in the ring, we'll look at this quote-unquote run with WWE quite differently than if he hits a home run did did you watch a lot of WCW and did are you experienced very well in Singh's history or his experience in the ring I assume yes but what did you watch a lot of WCW whenever he was the star oh yeah I, I watched WCW all the way from well when it turned was watching NWA as it turned into WCW and 88, 89, I've seen Sting all the way from the beginning of the Blade Runner, being Blade Runner Sting, all the way up to, uh, quote-unquote, the Crow Sting. And I've always been a huge, huge Sting fan. I was really disappointed he went to TNA, and I'm always sad that I feel like he lost 10 years of his career wrestling for, for TNA when he could have been doing that business with Vince McMahon. So, so this is going to be short-lived, we're saying, with Sting. You think? No, Never know. No, no, well, no. Well, it, it, it's hard to say. It's hard to say at this point how long it's going to last. We'd love to know for sure, but I don't think any of us know 100%, and I think we're going to know a lot more in the next two to three months. We're going to, to take a small break, and we're going to come back more with Horse Psychopath, and we're going to get more opinions on him on – the current WWE state. We're going to get more opinions on him on what he thinks about everything to do with wrestling. And we're going to come back with that here shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is Impact Wrestling Superstar, Mr. Anderson. Wait for it, wait for it. Anderson, you're listening to The Pencil with Rennie D and the Dirty. Hey, Dave, Dave, what do you get when an atheist and a Christian start a podcast? I don't know, Ken. What do you get when a Christian and an atheist start a podcast? I don't know. I don't know. You're the freaking comedian. I figured you'd have some kind of joke or something. <laughs> right. Hi, I'm David Vox Mullen. And I'm Mr. 
Anderson. Seriously? Wait for it. Just, just wait for it. Anderson. And we're the hosts of Push the Button on the DVM Podcast Empire. It's a show where we discuss religion, politics, and sex. All that stuff that we're not supposed to talk about. I am a Christian. And I'm an ordained minister with the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. I think that's code for he's an atheist. And together, we tackle any and every hot-button issue that the world is scared to talk about. Yeah, we're not afraid of the truth. Yeah, we're not afraid to piss people off. We're not afraid to push the button. So find us on iTunes. Or simply visit us online at dvmpe.com. And God willing, you'll come back for more. Uh, yeah, God willing. That's, that's, uh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth, Dave. We're back here in the tank in College Grove, Minnesota. Horace the Psychopath, pro wrestling, I will say it, legend in the state of Minnesota, in the state of Wisconsin, in the state of Illinois, Il- uh, Iowa, the whole entire Midwest. And I think, Travis, over the last week and a half, you've learned quite a bit about the man known as Horace the Psychopath, correct? I, I would argue that Horace the Psychopath is, can I say, the number one guest on our on our podcast that's been inside the tank. I think he might be. In I think he tank, might be for sure. If I can't count Rennie D as one of them and yeah. myself, which I will not count you and I will not count me, I will definitely count Horace the psychopath as the top guy that's joined us in our own the tank in Cottage Grove. And we're, we're going to start the uh, the hard questions, right, Uh-oh, Horace? We're going hardcore. We're going hardcore right now. Here's the thing, and I don't, and, and you know me. And we're not going to try to step on toes and not try to burn bridges. And I never would because you're one of my best friends in pro wrestling. But the fact of the matter is we've been asked by people locally what happened in September. What happened at the quote-unquote incident. And here's the thing, people. I want to preface this by saying I've known you for 12 years, my entire wrestling career. I've wrestled matches with you before. I've seen the way you prepare for matches. I've seen the way that you get ready for some of the biggest matches of your life. Here's what I was told, and I want you to respond. I was told, because I was from afar in Milwaukee, it was a pro wrestling battleground show in St. Paul, Minnesota. You were wrestling a certain individual. You had a time frame. You went over the time frame. People told you to go home. You didn't go home. I, I, I've, been on, I've been on a show before where you wrestled Shim Dog in his retirement match, and we wanted you to go home in 15 minutes, and you guys stretched it out to 45. So, I mean, I, 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 at first, that's, that was my thought. It's like, ah, this is Horace being – the horse wants to make sure that this person's last match is prolonged, per se. Um, this match wasn't that sort of situation, but – I've wrestled for Pro Wrestling Battleground before. I also know that there are matches on the card that are given time that they should not have time that, to go. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm not going to talk for you. It was you, this guy. There was a time. There was a promoter who interfered, a ref who interfered, says, go home, go home. What the hell happened? It's very simple. <laughs> my knee was screwed up. I went to the doctor the day before. I was prescribed some uh, happy pills. And I took some of those happy pills earlier in the afternoon. I had a couple beers at uh, said wrestling event. And uh, after that point, the night's rather hazy. So it's, it's not really as dramatic as people would make it seem, especially considering I really don't that, remember a whole to lot. To be completely honest, that kind of sounds like a Wednesday. To be completely honest, here's or the thing. A good Tuesday, and, mm-hmm. and I want to be, as your friend, I want to be as, I guess, delicate as possible. At the same time, I'm going to put you on blast a little bit because you have to, you have to 
I hope you respect the fact that I'm going to ask these questions. Absolutely. If it was you and I out there, and I'm not saying you disrespected the opponent you were wrestling with. And at I all. did. And, and, I did. But Absolutely. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say that. But if it was you and I, would things have been different? I think maybe so, because I think in that situation, maybe I would have stepped up and said, dude, we're, we're going home. We're done with this. The, the, the time frame is this. I don't know the guy you're wrestling personally. I don't know who he is, and, and that's no disrespect to him. I'm sorry. I, just, I, I don't know enough about the wrestling business, at least on that level. I've, we've had Rob Page on this before, and Rob was a referee slash commissioner, and, and he really didn't know a lot either, but apparently there was a time frame. I mean, here I am like talking for you. What was the situation? What happened? You tell me. Because I'm, I'm not telling gonna, you. I already yeah. told you. I really don't remember a whole lot, and that's, that's God's truth. That's why I, I don't consider it a quote-unquote incident because there really – there isn't much I can really say on it. Uh, don't do this at home, kids. Don't take prescription drugs with uh, – booze and i did and uh i lost the night of my life of memory and that was absolutely disrespectful to the promotion it was disrespectful to my opponent malachi matthews it was disrespectful to the other guys on the show um that said i'm not going to sit here and beat up myself for the next 25 minutes talking about it it happened thankfully nobody got hurt and uh people can talk about it if they want to talk about it but I'm I'm certainly not the first, and I'm certainly not going to be the last guy who uh, maybe overindulged. I and, not, uh, not, and then that's and that's, that's it's not an excuse, but I'm certainly not the first wrestler that I've ever been in the ring with, or I'm or, or there's been many wrestlers who've enjoyed. Uh, pre-match festivities <laughs> and that and that right there and that's real talk and, and that's real and that's where you're going to get on the pencil podcast every week you're going to get somebody that's going to tell you the truth and we respect you telling us that because who are we to say that that's not how things went independently or on tv or whatever it might have been and if you had that happen one match for however many years or whatever it might have been. Absolutely. That's completely understandable. And what we want to know is your guy that's been in the profession for so many years. What we want to know is what you know, and we want to pick your brain because Rennie D and I sit on this podcast and talk every week. Every week, and we want to talk about what we know. We don't know everything. You know more than we do. The guests that we have. Barely. Barely, barely, he says. But the guys that we have on the show every week know more than we know, and we want to know what they know so that we can talk more about what they know and we can have them on in further episodes. I, I think one of our guys that's sitting with us might have a question. Well, Lee, what, what Lee, I, one of I our guys say, in here. It's, it's important to point out that it's not even pre-match festivities. This, this was a knee incident. Um pills that were prescribed to you it's and it's not it's not a defining moment of a career so i i think Thank if you. any if anyone thinks this I, I think you're overthinking the situation because this this could happen to anyone and uh it's obviously unfortunate but it's, it's not defining and Thank now you. appreciate that and now that we get to this point in our conversation with horse psychopath rennie where are we going next? Do we want to go? Do we want to go to anything? Current? I do. Where, where do you want to go? No, I where do, do you want to I go? do. I do want to go to something current, but uh, Johnny, I, I got to ask you. And I know you. And I know you. I think I know you well enough, like I've mentioned, to consider you a. And we've talked about this on. Don't say friend. Don't no, say friend. I, honestly, God. Like, <laughs> I mean, we think about friends in this business, and it's hard to come by because yeah, totally everybody agree. in this business is like. I see this guy is, you know, number two on the roster, number three. I'm gonna undercut him any way I can because the politics in pro wrestling is a bunch of bullshit, and, and it, it, it bugs me so much to the point that if you need to undercut somebody to get ahead, that's not the way you should get ahead. You should get ahead because your talent is better, because you're working harder, because you're trying harder. That that's my mindset, but that's not the way this business works. And I'm not trying to put it on blast because it's the greatest business in the world. I fucking love pro wrestling but the fact is 
if if it was looking back on that situation, and I I, I want to get away from this as soon as possible, but would you change things? I think you would. I want. You wouldn't? I wouldn't because my knee was hurt. <laughs> would you wrestle the match? If it was me and you. I can't. I, can't that, I think it's an unfair question because I didn't have a couple beers thinking that I was going to lose my mind and not remember anything. Can I? Is it fair to say for me to say if it was you and I, maybe, and nothing against Malachi Matthews, do you think that somebody maybe in my shoes maybe would have taken more control of the situation? Or do you think it was the fact that I don't know Malachi Matthews. I don't know him at all. And maybe maybe I, he could have maybe could have nothing to do with the opponent. I mean, if if there's anything to regret, and I actually had thought it the day before when I went to the doctor, I probably should not have even agreed to wrestle that Saturday. I probably shouldn't have even went to the wrestling event. I really did take the prescribed medication with the intent to get me through my obligated date. And, and what, I made I made a mistake of getting there and having a couple of drinks and I reacted very poorly to it, <laughs> which, which I should have the maturity to understand that was a possibility. And it happened. I, and I, I and think, what, what, what was the, what was the injury beforehand? That what, what uh, the, a torn ACL. Torn okay. ACL. Oh, I've I, been there. Or I'm not going to like toot my own horn, but I guarantee if it was you and I, we would have figured it out. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm just probably trying to say. We like, probably would have. You would have. You would have set me straight. But I, I still think that. Again, I mean, I, I reacted. It happens. Your neck yeah. was. Your neck was bothered at First Avenue. Yep, absolutely. We figured it out. We had a great match. And uh, again, nothing to take away from your opponent. Nothing to take away from promotion. Shit happens in this business. Like people say all the time, wrestling is fake. Bullshit. It is not fake. Is the outcomes predetermined? Yeah. Okay. We're not gonna like tell you it's not, because it's been put on blast on. Every single possible public form you can think of that pro wrestling outcomes are predetermined. If but you don't know that right now, then stop listening to this podcast. It's not fake. It, it, it's not fake, though. Like, <laughs> ser- serious to God, you and I have wrestled a couple times. Like We could have done – um, and again, I feel like I'm throwing him under the bus, and I don't mean to. You're but not. No, I threw myself under the bus, and I, I, I completely 100% own up to it. I'm not making any excuses. It happened. It should not have happened. I don't think the situation would have been any different in retrospect because I still would have taken those pain pills. I still would have had a couple beers. And the end result was unfortunate. And, and, and it's unfortunate that there will always be a negative mark against me in that retrospect, fully deserved. And... That's what it is, right? And I, I think, I think it's important to mention, guys, that these, these are, these are guys that that go home at night and and have wives and kids, and they're just doing what they love to do. They're just doing what they love to do. Here's the deal, and I'm gonna say this, and then we're moving to the next subject. That is not your last match in pro wrestling. It, it very well could. No, be. it's not. <laughs> You're, look, you're, you're, you're sitting across from the table right now, and I'm telling you right now, your last match in pro wrestling will not be that. Your last match in pro wrestling, if I have anything to say about it, will be against me somewhere with people there. And we will – I'm telling you, – you can, you, can, you can step up and say what you want, but I'm telling you right now, your last match will not be September 2014. My last match will not be March of 2014. Your last match, Horace, will be against me somewhere at our discretion and we will fucking tear the roof off somewhere you and me one more time in full disclosure and let's move on after this because i'm embarrassed as it is i kind of get off on the absurdity of my last match being what it was and i think actually it's a perfect fit fit it's a perfect ending to my career because it is that absurd that that's a mark unintentional <laughs> but i almost that's like it. the fact that it ends bizarre and that's who you are if uh, if i had a fucking nickel for every nut i got after every unintentional unintentional situation i've been in i'd have a couple nickels so are you telling me that we're not going to wrestle one last match that's what he's telling you that's what he's telling you well all i can say is i would wrestle you tomorrow 
but I highly doubt it will be for Pro Wrestling Battleground. <laughs> how, how about this? How about this? If we can have Horace the Psychopath versus Renny D with no cameras, no microphones. No, no, no. We, we need cameras. Now. No cameras, no microphones, with friends and family of whoever Horace and Ryan can bring to the 17 table. 17 people is not going to cut it. Pencil Podcast Mania. Okay, so here's the deal. We'll leave it. We'll leave it undecided for now. But I will say, if I'm going to wrestle one more match, it will be against you, and we will pick the fucking location, and we will do what we do best. Can we? I like it. I hope I get paid a lot of money. No, I, 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 I Horus, <laughs> Horus, I'm I'm willing to take out a loan with myself, only if we can take one more break, Ryan, on your podcast. On our podcast, our can, we, can we take one more break and come back for 10, 15 minutes and start talking about a little bit more, maybe about the current yeah. WWE well, we gotta product, ask, we gotta maybe, maybe about some crazy stuff. Who knows what we're going to talk about, but I want to know if we can talk about a little bit more. Can we do that? Don't ask you me. Yes. Don't ask me. Ask, ask give me a yes. I'm, I'm yes. Horace, yes. give yes. me a yes. Hell yes. He gave me a hell yes. Let's 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 take a quick break, and uh, I'm going to do a plug. I can do a plug, right? You can give me one plug, only if it has something to do with bodybuilding. uh, If you want to give me a a minute of bodybuilding. I'll give you a minute of bodybuilding. Uh, Okay, our guests are always brought to you by iForce Nutrition. iForceNutrition.com. Use the promo code PENCIL30 at iForceNutrition.com. Look like dirt and me. Get to the gym, work out, get big, get big. Better, get harder, get faster, get stronger. Pencil 30 gets you 30% off, kicks back a little bit to the podcast. Hemoval, Max Out, Protein. There's a lot of things you can take from this company, and it will make it cheaper than bodybuilding.com. Do your thing. Look like us. Ask us questions. We'll give you, we'll give you answers if you want to look like us. But we're going to come back with Horace. We're going we're gonna to talk WWE, NXT, whatever you guys want. We'll wrap it up. But also, mark your candles in a future date. Horse Psychopath. Renny D, one more time at Pencil Podcast. Hey, everybody, you're listening to The Pencil, a professional wrestling podcast hosted by me, Renny D, and my friends. Each and every Tuesday, we come at you with a new episode on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, and YouTube, where we discuss the previous week's product on television, as well as the ins and outs of professional wrestling news and rumors. We'll also bring you exciting guests to bring you their perspective on professional wrestling. Follow us on Twitter at Pencil Podcast. Back in the tank in College Grove, Minnesota, I am Rennie D, along with Travis Mester, Horace the Psychopath, talking a lot of awesome stuff in pro wrestling, and now we are finally getting to, I the guess, fun part. the we're fun get, part. We're, get, we're getting to the fun part right now. We're getting to the part where we're going to talk about situations. We're going to talk about superstars. We're going to talk about who's in WWE right now, who's not in WWE right now, and what we think about them, and what we think about what they're going to do in the future. And, and we talked before we went on air with you, Horace, and there was a couple guys that you mentioned that maybe I don't dis- I don't agree with that could translate to the roster. And I don't know, Dirt, you might think the same thing. But let's throw out a couple names and let's talk. Let's be Stephen A. Smith and, and uh, what, what's the other guy in ESPN uh, first day? Stephen A. Smith and... Who's, uh, who's the white guy with the curly hair? The white guy with the curly hair. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> it's, not, it's not Jesus. No. It's He's the other white guy. He's too anyway. Ripped. All right, we we you got here. We were, we had NXT revival on the, the new pay-per-view or the new the new takeover and you said and I'm going to say this because I think it's I think it's fair that Finn Balor should not be in NXT. Correct? Correct? Explain that. He's too good. He's been in the business 10 plus years. He's wrestled all over the world. He's already awesome. He should be on the main roster for Raw, making that company a lot of money. 
and uh, making some other guys look really good and becoming a superstar. I think it's a complete waste of his talent to be working NXT in front of, I don't know what that building holds, but in front of 900 people, 300 people, whatever it is. And uh, I just think it's a waste of time. If it's my promotion and I have a talent like a Finn, 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 is it Baller, right? Or Baylor? Baylor, Baylor, Baylor Prince Devin. Baylor, Boro, whatever. whatever. Prince Devin, if I had a Prince Devin on my... Uh, on my payroll, he would be working uh, my main roster, top of the card, and let him go. How long you been working? How long you been working for? Brush? How you been working for? Twenty? How many years? Twenty four. Twenty four years. Twenty four years. So, so are we talking about? We're talking about Skip Bayless. We're talking about no. We're we're talking about Finn Balor. But you you can be Skip Bayless. You can be Stephen A. Smith. F- fair enough. So if we're talking about Finn Balor, glad glad you knew the fucking guy's name. I, after like first of all, first of all, Finn Balor because I have a great fucking personality Finn Balor will he will he be a superstar in WWE in 2000 no just in general in, in 2018 maybe not not today I don't think that he will be a superstar until Triple H takes over and I think that's a personal feeling of me and I think that's a feeling that a lot of people have that watch WWE on a weekly basis he- they want to wait until Vince McMahon either gives up the power to Triple H and understands that what people watch in NXT, people love, but there's only 400 people that love it. And it'll be very interesting to, as to where it goes from there. Here, here's my take, and, and I respect both your opinions. And I'm going to look at this from a business standpoint. Vince McMahon is not going to give up the reins until he's dead. Do we all agree? Agreed. Agreed. Okay, so... Will Finn Balor be a name on WWE television? I, in horse, I respectfully disagree. I don't think he will be, and but that is not to say that he won't be. Here's the thing: he reminds me more of Jeff Hardy more than anybody because of the the, the physical paint on his on his body and stuff. And kids can buy into that stuff. So if kids buy into Finn Balor, put him on TV because Vince cares about what money. Money. And he cares about the guys who invest in WWE. It's a publicly traded company. At the end of the day, if the investors buy into the product, the storylines, Finn Balor could be that guy. I think, I think he is the guy on, on NXT right now who maybe more so than anybody besides maybe Sami Zayn-ish. Has, I love Sami Zayn. Right? Like has a chance to maybe get over on WWE TV with the with the the paint and everything else, I'm not taking anything away from his work. Fantastic match against Neville on NXT Takeover Revival. Will he translate to the? Pro- Here's my biggest fear: the accession. Awesome in NXT. Oh, I wouldn't say awesome in NXT either. Actually, to be honest no, they with you. weren't awesome. Like, but I think they were over ish on 300 people in NXT. They brought him the main roster. They kind of take a shit, but I think. What WWE is doing is they're shoving them down our throat to the point where they will eventually catch on to the point where the fans will say, I hate this effing tag team, and they will still be on TV. Or am I completely wrong? You're not completely wrong. I think you're wrong, but I don't think you're completely wrong. What of do you course. Think? You think I'm wrong? The session on, on TV, they demolition, road warriors, JBL threw one of the bus for Christ's sake. So, like... How does this tag team get over? I'm not a fan of tag team wrestling. I'm the wrong guy. To Come ask. on, I, 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 I start on okay, tag okay, team wrestling. Okay. Let's how go. About, how, about, how about this one? How about, how about this one? How about if we throw that question out because right. it sounds next one? Like Who you neither, got now? I'm saying right now. I want to know. I'm not talking about a person. I'm Pick Kevin about, Owens because I'll tell you right now he's not getting over. I'm talking about a situation right now. One situation, and it's a big situation. And it's a situation we talked about off the air. Do you think right now, is it going to be a triple threat at WrestleMania? Oof. Or is it not going to be a triple threat at WrestleMania? Because right now, is it, I is think... It, do we think or is it what we want? Is it what we think is going to happen? If you were, if you were the guy who had the pencil that was going all, all after the main event of WrestleMania, are you going Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, or are you going triple threat right now? Horse or Psychopath, what do you say? If it was me booking, it would be Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. But in my opinion, it should have been John Cena versus Daniel Bryan as the main event. Book it right now, WrestleMania. If you 
considering the current situation, you watch the product. You have six weeks until Mania. Book it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I can change anything I want. Anything you want. But <laughs> anything it, you but want. Has, anything you, you, know, want. you know the business of the pro wrestling. It has, it has to be within the context of where the current product is Correct. At. Correct. And you have to understand, investors, money, what makes sense. You can't put Adam Rose in the main event of WrestleMania. <laughs> you can't do it. I you love Adam Rose. You can't do it. you got to uh, do what, what they're doing right now. From today, period. They got because, six and a because, half weeks. Because six come, and a half weeks. come post Raw Mania, we're gonna call you back up and say, "Hey, dude, you were either right or you were fucking wrong." So you need to. What happens at WrestleMania 31 in San or Santa Clara? San, Santa Clara, and whatever you say at my happens, bo- at the 49er Stadium, I will call you out on air for whatever you call right now. What do you think is gonna happen? Is it a one-on-one match? Is it a triple threat? I, I mean, if you're asking me what I think. It's going it's gonna to happen. happen. I think it's a triple threat. If you're asking me who, what I would do, it's Brian versus Brock. What do you do with Roman Reigns then? Who does he work at? I don't know anyone? because then I'd have to go back six weeks to book from pre-Rumble on. Because if, you know Rollins is working working Orton at Mania. Uh, it's seemingly right. And, so like, if, you if you do, if you do what you said, if it was me booking, it would be Sting versus Rollins because I think that's the better match. And I okay. think it does more for Rollins. So if, if, you're, you're if, a worker. You, you're going to say that. You know it's Triple H and Sting. You already know that. That's, that's I have set zero stone. desire to see and, that and match. If you, and if you think, if you think the best case scenario for the main event is what? If it was me booking, Brian versus Brock. So if it's Brian versus Brock, who do you have walking out of WrestleMania 31 with the belt right now as of today? <laughs> As unrealistic as it is, I would have Daniel Bryan because I think that's the bigger long-term return. Beautiful. That's, that's, how you that's bo- the answer. That's the answer Whoa. we want. And that's what you get when you come to the Pencil Podcast because when you ask for an answer, you get an answer. You don't get, oh, it might be this guy. It might be that guy. There's 15 different situations. But that's There's what always that's, that many situations. That's what he's booking. But what happens? Does, Ro- does Roman Reigns leave WrestleMania 31 the champion or does – do they somehow work a deal with Lesnar? Because I think the the smart decision, if if Brian's not winning the title, you need the you need to re-sign Lesnar and have him retain the title at WrestleMania. I believe Roman Reigns leaves WrestleMania with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. We might have to owe him a bottle. I love it. I love it. You, I think Dar- he's right. What are you doing? Is it? I think I think what he just said. Is the most accurate description of it's what's going so to happen, sad, isn't it? It makes me angry. Is but he ready? Is he ready, horse? Is, is no, he's not ready. And we, I think we all know that in the business. And I don't think it's a personal attack on necessarily him or his work. I think it's a matter of the fans' preference, and it's pretty obvious the fans' preference right now is Daniel Bryan. And I would also suggest there's other wrestlers behind Daniel Bryan before Roman Reigns that the fans would rather see on top. I, I feel like Dolph Ziggler is extremely popular. I feel like Dean Ambrose is extremely popular. And honestly, I mean, you probably could even throw Randy Orton into that mix. You could throw Sheamus into that mix. I really think that Roman Reigns is probably on the babyface side of WWE as it is as of this date. I feel like Roman Reigns at best, at best, is probably the number four baby face in WWE, if not six or seven. Can, can, can you guys, will you guys remember the boss if I tell you that I don't think Dolph Ziggler should <laughs> should ever win the world title? I'm not world. a Dolph Ziggler fan, but I'm just... I don't think Dolph based is... Based off Dolph of is, fan it, reaction, Dolph Ziggler, in my opinion, of the full time... WWE roster That's members. That's right. You hate part-time guys. I do hate part-time guys. To I, me, I Dolph, want to get on this. Can Dolph, we have something to get on Dolph this? Ziggler is the second most over baby face on the WWE, WWE roster. I want you and to... I will, and I will say, I will say, and I have, I have gone on record numerous times that Dolph Ziggler is one of my favorite, if not the favorite wrestler that I have on the roster. And I'm here to say that he is fantastic in the role that he is in. He is exactly what you want in a guy for the mid-card and for 
I watch NXT regularly. And I'm telling you right now, bring those guys up. He is a perfect guy to all of a sudden put guys over, be in that 9 o'clock hour, and all of a sudden you love having Dolph Ziggler on the roster because he makes everybody look good and he can win matches that nobody will disagree with. But he is no one, no one that you want to win the World Heavyweight Champion. Are we totally discrediting Seth Rollins cashing in at WrestleMania? We're going to wait till after WrestleMania at Extreme Rules and more there? If it was me again booking, I, I because they've never done it at Mania, I would have Seth cash in. In, in an ideal world, I would love to see whoever comes out of WrestleMania with the belt, or at least as of the pin that evening, I would love to see Seth Rollins cash in I, and, and win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I don't see, I don't, legitimately, I don't see any reason the way that they built things in the last year for it not to happen exactly like you just said it should. Seth Rollins should leave WrestleMania with the tel- with with the belt. No matter how it happens, he should leave it with the belt. I don't know how he cashes in, and I don't know if the fact that all this shit has happened with him in the last fucking week and a half, but whatever happens, happens. That, that's a good question, Wrestle- though, right? He should, le- he should leave WrestleMania with the belt, and when we are in Chicago, he should have the belt going into Extreme rules, I believe. Here, here's the question. Okay, we have a couple questions before we wrap this up. Question one for you guys, and we talked about this last week, on the po- or two weeks ago on the podcast, Dirt. Seth Rollins' uh, situation with the text messages and the, and the picture. Dick pic. Dick pic. Does it affect his place in WWE? And, and this is a good question for you, Horace, because you know Vince. Or you Maybe don't know Vince, but you like you know – We've known Vince to tweak the storylines and tweak things based on current life situations. Seth is in a bad place as of two weeks ago with the uh, the, the picture, right? We can call it the picture, the picture gate of his dick. <laughs> He's a heel. <laughs> that it's so simple. I don't know why people are making a big deal about it. It's He's not a, a big deal. He's a heel, but you know it's a public. I'm not saying company, you guys. Right? Are, I'm saying the general fan population. He's a heel. It was linked to the WWE.com account, though. He's a heel. Who cares? Anything that he does. Thank God. Thank God Horace said that. Any, I agree. Anything he does that's bad publicity, he's a heel. Okay. And here's the thing. It's not a sex tape. It's not a domestic violence. Well, Triple H was a domestic violence. It's not a. It's not a assault. No. Mm. Hey, whoa. It's it's a naked picture. It could be assault. And he's a heel. Who okay. cares? Right now, both you guys on blast. WrestleMania 31, Santa Clara, California. Who leaves WrestleMania 31, not with the pin, but with the title around their waist? If whoever, you had to put whoever, your, your whoever, pocket Whoever's them. wrong has to come on the podcast the next week. And admit they're wrong. And admit that they're wrong. And should, if it's my last dollar... Unfortunately, I believe Roman Reigns leaves WWE WrestleMania as the World Heavyweight Champion. I pick Brock Lesnar. And I think, think Lesnar's going to leave with the with the title because I think I that say, they that they think Vince is so fucking smart to sign him to a two month deal if he has to. And I say that WrestleMania 31 ends with Seth Rollins holding three, three holding, 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 holding that t- title. Hi, and he's gonna look good when he does it too. His midsection looks great. He, you're not gonna see his dick. You're not gonna he, see his dick. We got Seth Rollins. We got Roman Reigns. We got Brock Lesnar. All of the above picked on the Pencil Podcast, and we'll see who's wrong and who's wrong. Those two are gonna owe the other one at least a bottle. I would say. All right. Last question. Last question. We'll wrap it up. Undertaker, Bray Wyatt. It's going to happen. We know it's going to happen, right? Allegedly. Allegedly, but I think it's a foregone, co- foregone conclusion. Does Taker... I have a hard time thinking about this one. Does Taker leave with a victory? Or does Bray Wyatt make it 21-2? and two? You want to go first or second? I'll go first. I'll go first. I believe... That it will be Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker. And 
as of today. And I will, I, I, whatever. Right as, now. I'm saying Bray Wyatt walks out with a victory over The Undertaker, and it will be a coronation at the top of the Titantron with The Undertaker, Bray Wyatt standing there, and The Undertaker will give him his ado. So do, do you Bray, think that there's not a Sting Undertaker in Dallas when we're there? No, no. I do not believe there will be. So you think a, this is it? I think that it would. I, I honestly think that it would have been correct for Undertaker to have ended his career last year, and I think it would have been best for him to never be shown his face again after we watched. until he gets inducted in the <laughs> Hall of Fame. Correct. Until, until until he was inducted in the Hall of Fame, I think him losing to Brock Lesnar would have been the best. Case so scenario. twenty plus years in I the think, business. I think. Losing to Brock Lesnar is the way that I would have ended it. If the pencil was in my hand, that's the way I would have done it. But I believe now that Bray Wyatt will beat The Undertaker into submission. And three, four, five Sister Abigails later, we will see the end of The Undertaker. And we will see the beginning of Bray Wyatt's reign. Let's end this episode with you, Horace. Undertaker, his legacy, does he do the job this year and be done, or does he finish his career in Dallas at Jerry's World against Sting at WrestleMania 32? I think he finishes his career at WrestleMania 30... Is, is it 31 is it? next year? 32 is next year. I, 31, I, 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 31 is Santa Clara, 32 I, is Dallas. I believe he finishes his career at WrestleMania 32 in Dallas. Uh, opponent, I mean... It's got to be Sting, right? Who, I mean, that's what I mean, we thought. Who, who knows? It could, be, it could be anybody, but I feel like he ends it next year. And because I believe he will finish it in Dallas, he must win. He must go over at WrestleMania 31, and he will beat Bray Wyatt. Do I think that there's some sort of passing of the torch, as, as, as Dirty alluded to? I absolutely think in some sort of way um, they will they – will, storyline that somehow and it's probably logical and smart business but i think uh bray wyatt did the job for john cena last year and i believe he does the job for the undertaker at wrestlemania 31 we got a good couple of episodes huh what what do you think ryan i want to hear what you yeah, want to absolutely. think before you before you send us off i want to hear what your prediction is because i think that what horse the psychopath just said is fucking Bullshit. I think he's wrong and I think I'm right. And I want to hear what you have to say because I don't want to hear in two years that, oh, all of a sudden he was right and I was wrong. I want to hear it on the air. What do you think is going to happen? I think happen? the plan all along was him for him to pass the torch at WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, his hometown at Dallas. So I think, will he go over this year? Yes, I think he goes over this year, and I think that he goes over next year, and he beats Sting next year, and he goes in the Hall of Fame, and his career is over. He has one loss at WrestleMania. He is the greatest character, greatest gimmick in the history of prof- – there's nobody that can, that can hold a torch to the Undertaker. And we talk how many hours about gimmicks, and we're sitting here with Horace the Psychopath, who sat with one gimmick one time. Just like, years, just like Undertaker, just like twenty three well, years, I mean, twenty three years, twenty three years, Horace Psychopath sat with this gimmick, and I'm telling you right now, and I hope that both of you respect me whenever you <laughs> understand how right I am. You are wrong. Renny D is wrong, and he is wrong. <laughs> so I ask for both of you to come back on the Pencil Podcast. Well, I'm, I'm going after to. It's, it's WrestleMania 31. <laughs> After WrestleMania 31, and I want both of you to come back on and admit to me that both of you were wrong. But it was beautiful when we watched it. I mean, I'm back on. It's, it's kind of my show and your show. So, I mean, I'll be here. They only watch for one reason. Uh, well, they don't watch. They listen. But besides that, I would love for Mr. Horace to come back on the podcast. But, dude... Let's let's bring it full circle. Let's bring it full circle. We're gonna full we're gonna, circle. We're gonna close it in after two episodes with uh, my mentor, my man, the guy I looked up to since I was fourteen years old. I've alluded to this before, and I'm I'm gonna look in the eyes right now as I'm talking on the microphone, and, and people at at home or listening, wherever they're listening, whether it be in the gym or in their car, 
Horace, you're the man, dude. Like, I will tell you right now, like, you can look at me. You can look at me. There you go. There we go. You are the man. You took the time out of your career, and I can't thank you enough for everything that you've ever done for me as a performer in this business, as a guy who wanted to be the best I could possibly be in this wrestling business. And even though I didn't make it to the show, and even though maybe I could still one day make it there, I'm happy with what we're doing, Dirt. Every day. I'm happy with what we're doing. And I'm by happy every day, I mean every week. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you came on. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just dead serious. Thank you for everything that you have done for me since day one in pro wrestling. You are a mastermind in this business. I don't, I'm not pulling this stuff out because you're on the podcast. I, I mean, it's truthfully, honestly, the God. Whatever that means. Hor- Horace, there, there are legitimately things that we talked about in the last two to three weeks that we're going to post on our podcast that are very important to us that you wrestled with Rennie D. You talked with me, myself, Dirty, Travis Messer. You talked with our guy that watches a lot of WWE wrestling, Lee Stork. Smooth talker. You Smooth all, talker. And, and, you, and, you, and you talked off screen about – a lot of things, even with people that walked over walked over to the tank in Cottage Grove, and they 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 started talking about my goodness. They started saying, "Hey, this is what I like about Total Divas. This is what I don't like about Total Divas." There are things that people said while we were recording this podcast that I think are important that people need to hear about. And you didn't, you weren't about. Saying that you weren't, you didn't want to talk about certain things or certain this or certain that, and that's important to us, and we appreciate that, and we appreciate you coming to our tank and talking to us a little bit. And I, I want to say in closing, and I, I alluded to it before. Honestly, God, man, we had two matches. That two, was it. Two very good matches. Two very good matches, and I can't thank you enough for the stuff that you've done for me in my pro wrestling career for the. For the stuff that, even though, even though we weren't wrestling all the time, you took the time, man. And that's nothing anybody, I mean, that's nothing you needed to do. And I think, I hope that you, any guys out there who are listening, can look at somebody who has been there for five, ten years and just stop and think for a second and ask them what they think. Especially if you think that they're worthy. Because there are a lot of guys out there who have busted their ass in this business, like you, Horace, who have put your, you, this is your entire life. You start when you were 18. 18 years old. And I didn't need to ask you. I didn't ever need to ask you, but I wanted to because you were a man who have has been to Japan, Memphis, a bunch of different territories when they still existed. And you took the time to explain to me the importance of the business of the greatest sport. In the history of sports, there's the NFL, there's the NBA, there's the NHL, which, I mean, you like. But after that, there is professional No, no, no not wrestling. after that. Before that, there's Before professional wrestling. That. And Horace, Johnny, whatever the world wants to call you, you are the fucking man. And I will say that to the day I totally walk away from this business, which will never be never. I love you. I will always love you, and I thank you for every little thing that you've ever given me in this business. And I'm I'm holding you to the last match thing. You're not you're not you're not done until you and I do this one more time. Well, hey, I just want to say uh, thanks to Dirty for having me on. Thanks to you, Rennie. Uh, it was I'm grateful. It was fun. I have a few things in closing that I ask. Uh, not the ask. This, this is your this is your mic right now. I'm I'm shutting my mic off right now. It's all you, Horace. I definitely want to come back on the pencil podcast. But I would like to do the, uh, I would like to guest host the Total Divas slash Fifty Shades of Grey pencil podcast because we must do that. And two, with your permission, I'd like to bring more fish next time. Is that I'd like a, to add fish to the collection of the tank. Is that a female comment? Because we can we can make that happen. <laughs> no, I just uh, I want to add some. Fish can we can we get you on again? Can yeah, we get absolutely. You on again? Look, look, look. But I was being serious, but I really do want to do a total divas Fifty Shades. We of can Grey. do a total divas. Look, yeah. Let's have you on Cordy, again. Cordy, can we get a total divas yeah, situation? I, I mean, we have a girl here, but she doesn't want to talk about it. But 
Guys, seriously, like, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to have Horace on again. He's at Horace the Psycho. That's it. On Twitter. HTP916. On Instagram. I'm at Real Renny D. He's at Travis Messer. We're at Pencil Podcast on Twitter. At Pencil Podcast on Instagram. Backslash Pencil Podcast on Facebook. Pencilpodcast.com. Stay tuned for the new website, Pencilpodcast.com. Should be great. Horse, my man. Love you. Thanks. Dirty, any closing words? That's it. We're out. Enjoy the rest of the week. We will be back next week with, I'm not sure who, but uh, chances are probably won't be as cool as Horse. But we'll, we'll try the best we can. I'm Randy. Take care.